Now as a physics teacher, I often hear this kind of noise in the back of my room, and it's due to these things here, these fidget spinners. For some reason, they've just become a massive craze, uh, and you know, I don't really get it myself. However, um, this video is a bit about what fidget spinners have to do with the design of racing cars. And uh, we're gonna basically look at how we can make a fidget spinner spin for longer. And there's really two ways of doing this. Uh, the first thing to do is to reduce any friction in the bearing. And often we can do that with something like this, some kind of lubricant, uh, and all we need to do is squirt a small amount in, and that's going to reduce uh, the frictional torque, which is slowing something down. But apart from reducing friction, what else can we do? Well, it's about the design of the actual fidget spinner itself. Now, normally, if we think of an object, we uh, talk about its kinetic energy and its momentum. And often we talk about maybe something going from A to B. So it's moving in a straight line uh, and its kinetic energy is equal to half mv squared or its momentum is equal to mass times velocity. But if you have a fidget spinning moving, at this time it's moving, it has momentum, it has kinetic energy, but actually its velocity is zero. And this is where we need to think about things like angular momentum and its rotational kinetic energy. Now for a normal object moving from left to right, uh, kinetic energy is a half mv squared and its linear momentum is equal to mv. That's what we know. However, rotating objects, we have slightly different equations. And what we can say is that the kinetic energy is equal to a half i omega squared. And in actual fact, the linear momentum is equal to i omega. So what is i and omega? Well, omega uh, is the angular uh, velocity. You know, this is how many times or how many radians, which is the angle it goes through per second. So effectively, if you want to make this fidget spinner last longer, you need to spin it quicker. Pretty obvious. So um, the faster you spin it, the greater the kinetic energy and the greater its angular momentum. And in fact, we, give, we use the symbol L for angular momentum to kind of sort of confuse things a bit, whereas linear momentum has a symbol P. Uh, and again, this is just uh, Ke for kinetic energy. So uh, we can increase omega, which will make it spin for longer. But we can also increase i. And this i is something that you might not have heard of before, and it's called the moment of inertia. Now, this moment of inertia, this is effectively, it's not just the mass of the object, but it's how the mass is distributed around the centre as well, the, the centre of rotation. In actual fact, you can work it out for any shape, uh, and it's equal to the sum of m r squared. OK, where you've got all the masses at their distance from the centre, all kind of sort of uh, uh, joined together. And it's for a 3D shape like this, it's quite hard to do. So that means what we need to do is think about increasing the mass and making the mass as far away from the centre as possible. Uh, and in actual fact, if you have a metal fidget spinner, so I've got one over here, even though the bearings are of similar quality, what we'll find is that these two things, they uh, will spin for a very, very different amount of time. So what you see is that uh, even though this one here is, uh, you know, stop spinning, this one here just keeps going and going and going. The bearings are of a similar quality, but because this has got more mass, it's got a greater moment of inertia, and therefore it's got a greater amount of kinetic energy at the start. It's going to stop that there. So how do you make this one here better? Well, what we can do is we can add some mass. So I'm going to add some mass with just uh, some of these small magnets. So what I've done then is I've increased the mass, which is going to increase my moment of inertia. And to give it the biggest moment of inertia and therefore the biggest amount of kinetic energy or momentum at the start, all I'm going to do is move these masses as far to the end as possible. OK, and what I can then do, I'm just going to put a pound here just to kind of rest it on as it spins. And I can set it spinning and we'll find that that actually spins for longer than it would have done without the extra mass. And there we go. So we've had that fidget spinner spinning for longer. But what's that got to do with the race car that I talked about at the start? Well, this is due to the design of a thing called a flywheel. Now, a flywheel is designed to store some of the energy of an object that it can be released at a later date. Now, so for example, you've got a, a racing car coming along. As it breaks hard for a corner, that uh, kinetic energy it initially had, we don't want it to just be wasted as heat in the brakes. If somehow we can store some of that energy that the car had, what we can do is we, get, we set a flywheel in motion. The flywheel will then store some of the energy of the car as it comes into the corner, and as the car comes out, that energy can then be released so that the engine has to do less work. It happens on Formula One cars and it happens on buses as well. Now, to make the most efficient flywheel, you want it to store the greatest amount of kinetic energy. So that means it has to be able to move uh, and rotate really quickly, and it needs to have the biggest moment of inertia possible. Now, to give something a bigger moment of inertia, it needs to have a greater mass, 
but it's not just giving something like maybe a solid uh, shape of mass. What you want to do is have as much of that mass at the edge of the shape as possible. So a bit like a wheel, I guess it's being called a flywheel. Uh, and so this is why um, the design of fidget spinners, where you have as much mass as far away from the centre of rotation as possible, while still, I guess, being constrained that this object isn't so massive that it takes up the whole car, you want it to be, uh, you know, a reasonable size. You want to have as much of that mass on the edge of the flywheel as possible so it can store as much kinetic energy. And that's why uh, the design of fidget spinners and how we can make them uh, spin for longer is also important when it comes to designing components in real life objects. If you'd like to find out more about rotational motion, it's not really a topic taught in year 12, but it is taught as an optional topic for some exam boards. But uh, have a look uh, here uh, for some more videos about that. And also you can click on this uh, thing here to subscribe to my year 13 channel uh, for everything that you might need for year 13 physics. Thank you.